Want someone to walk you through the step-by-step -step of setting up shop in the new version of Squarespace? In this first video, we'll be covering the basics of adding your shop to your site, creating your first product or service listings, setting up a way for people to pay you, and a look at which Squarespace plan to choose based off what you need your shop to do. In next week's video, I'll be covering the basics of customizing the look and layout of your shop and product pages, so be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell button to be notified when that video goes live. I'll be sure to pop a link to the video in the description below once it's live. Now, let's jump in. If you don't already have a website, you'll first have to visit squarespace.com, click get started, and pick a template. The good news is every single template in Squarespace 7.1 offers the exact same features and functionality, so even if it doesn't actually have an online shop, one can easily be added. If you want my best tips and advice for picking the right template for your business, check out this video. Okay, so before we can start setting up shop, listing our products, and tweaking our store's design, we need to physically add an online store to our site. To do this, go to Pages, add a page, and choose Store Collection. If you already have a store and you just want to start building and organizing a new category, click Create New Category. But since we're building our store from scratch, I'll create a new store. You'll be able to tweak the style and layout of your store once you add to it, so just pick which example you feel looks best as a starting point. I've already added our mock jewelry shop to use as an example here, so let's open up and take a tour of the back end to get started. Over here on the right, we have our store page. This is the page your visitors will see when they click shop in your main navigation and want to browse through all your products or services. It has all the same capabilities as a regular page that you can add, drag, and drop whichever sections or content blocks you choose. There's only one exception, and that is this one special shop page section. This is built into your shop page automatically to display any products you add to the shop, and so it can't be deleted or blocks added to it. Only the display settings and preferences can be tweaked, which we'll be covering in the next video on customizing the look of your shop and products pages. On the left, we have our store panel. This is where all of our products live. My store panel may look a little different because my products are already organized by category, but if you have yet to add any categories, it will look a little bit more like this. This is where I come to add, edit, and organize my listings. This store panel is also where we will find our page settings for our main shop page by clicking this little gear icon. This is where we come to change our shop's URL, product categories or subcategories, SEO title and description to make it easier to find in a Google search, the preview image you want to display when someone shares a link to your shop, and your advanced settings like enabling quick view, the little preview of the product your visitor can see when they hover over your thumbnail and product tags, which help you further categorize your listings. You can choose to create all your categories and subcategories ahead of time here in your store's page settings, or by creating them as needed when you're adding individual products to the shop. Any category you add will be a visible clickable category on your shop page, so you don't want to have any categories without actual products in them when you do launch your shop. To make a subcategory, just drag and drop one of your categories under another. And to create a sub-subcategory, just drag it under another subcategory. Let's take our mock jewelry shop for example. Our categories might be rings, necklaces, and earrings. Our subcategories for rings might be gold and silver. And then we might want to create another layer of subcategories under our gold rings for gold engagement rings and gold wedding bands. Tags can only be added in an individual product settings, but once they're added, they can also be managed here in your store page settings. Think of tags as a way to organize your shop using non-product feature related descriptions like new arrivals, bestsellers, or Mother's Day gift ideas. So let's add our first product by clicking the plus sign. Then choose the category that best describes what you're trying to sell. You have physical, which means you'll physically be sending them a package when they make their purchase. Digital, which means that goods are delivered via email, like a link to a downloadable file or a password protected page on your site. Service, which means that rather than sending them anything electronically or in the mail, in order to fulfill their purchase, you're going to have to actually provide them with a service. And gift card. These are also electronically delivered, meaning they won't get a physical copy of their gift card, but they can apply the balance of that virtual gift towards future purchases in your store. So we'll go ahead and select physical products to start. When you fill in the information under each tab in a product settings, you're telling Squarespace what information to include on that specific product pages. Squarespace will take the info that you put in here and use your chosen template colors, buttons, fonts, and other styles to automatically create you a product page with your photos, 
options for buying, add to cart, and any other info about your product or service. It all gets built right here in the product settings. Depending on when you started your free trial for your Squarespace 7.1 site, your product settings window may look just a bit different. The classic editor will have all the settings we're about to go through under each individual tab, whereas the new product editor will have all those settings on one long page. Depending on how long Squarespace chooses to support the classic editor, you may have the option to switch between the editors by clicking here in the top right corner. I'll toggle back and forth between our two editors as we go through all the steps to add our product info. So this is where you'll add your product's image, name, enticing description, whether or not you want your listing to be visible, scheduled to go live at a later date, or hidden from your store. This is also where you add those tags and categories that we talked about. Here's what that looks like in the new editor. You have the name of your product and its description here. The images that appear on your product page and the thumbnail image that will appear on your shop page both get uploaded here. And the product visibility and category and tag settings are found just a little further down the page. So when you go to edit your product's price, it will automatically take you to the pricing or value tab depending on which of these four types of products you're adding. This is where you add in any different options your customer has for buying that one product. Say you sell a ring that comes in sizes 6 to 10. You'd want to add in a new line for every size option your customer has. But you also carry the same ring in silver and gold. Rather than creating a whole new product listing, you would want to add a new line item or variant for every size in color gold as well. This allows you to select specific images to show when the customer chooses that combination of options from your drop-down menu on the product page. This also allows you to set different prices for different options of that same product and put some on sale but not others. To put a product on sale, just open up the variant you want to go on sale, type in a sale price, and check the sale box. Now let's look at where those settings live in the new product editor. You have your price here, whether you'd like for it to be on sale and what the sale price is, then down here, you have the option to add your variants. So if we wanted to add our two different colored rings in all the different sizes, just type the options in here and hit enter after each one. Once they've been added, you can click edit all to edit each variant's price, SKU, quantity availability, thumbnail image, etc. You can also open each one individually and add any info or images that are specific to that variant here. Additional info is where you put any information you want to appear under the preview and add to cart area at the top of the page. This could include the non-sexy stuff you wouldn't want to put in your super enticing description, like where it was made, the materials it's made out of, etc. But you can also use this area to get super fancy and detailed about your product or service, and you can add drag and drop content blocks here just like you would on a normal page. If the purchase requires you to collect information from your customer to fulfill it, like if you need to have the ring custom engraved, or you're a service provider who needs to learn more about your clients, you're prepared for their project or appointment, then you would do that here under Forms. The Options tab is where you go to edit the URL or to customize what it says on your Buy Now or Add to Cart buttons for that product. This is also where you'll upload any specific image you want to appear for that product's thumbnail on the main shop page. Otherwise, it will just select the first image uploaded under the Item tab. Just like any page on your site, you have the option to add an SEO title and description to make that page easier to find that product in a Google search, as well as swap out the preview image that you would want to appear when your link for that product is shared on social media, or to automatically update any connected social accounts when that product is posted. These tabs are mostly the same for each type of product with the exception of digital products. You won't be able to add variants, so you will need to create a new listing for every digital product you plan to offer. Then the file that you're electronically sending your customer when they purchase gets uploaded here. Now we'll toggle back over to our new product editor to see where those settings are found. So you have your additional information here and clicking it opens up a very similar building window to the classic editor where you can add and rearrange content blocks just like on a normal page. You have your option to add a form here you can edit your product's URL, SEO title, and SEO description here. And your social sharing image can be changed here. Social accounts you want to share to get connected here. Your buy now or add to cart button gets customized here. And rather than living in your variants, your product dimensions for calculating shipping gets edited here.
Now that we've added our first products, we have a few more things to do before we can start selling. So we're back here under our home panel. Let's navigate to commerce, then payments where we'll add a way for our customers to pay you. To set up a payment processor, click on the one you wanna add and follow the prompts it gives you for filling in your info to create an account with the payment processor. If you already have an account with either, you can sign in here. Once connected, you can choose whether or not your store will accept Apple Pay. This is also where you go to view any payment activity without having to log into your Stripe account. To set your store's currency, scroll under your payment processor options, click currency and select from the little dropdown. The last thing we need to do before you can start selling is to add shipping options to your store. This is obviously only needed if you're offering physical products. So head under shipping, add shipping option, and then choose how you'd like shipping costs to be calculated for each purchase, whether it's by flat rate, item weight, or carrier specific quotes. When adding your shipping option, you'll also want to go in and select which zones or countries you're willing to ship to. Ready to start selling? If you're currently on the personal plan, you'll need to upgrade your Squarespace subscription to a plan that supports e-commerce. You can find those settings by going to your home panel under settings, billing and account, billing, and then clicking upgrade. The business plan is the least expensive option for getting started as this allows you to sell unlimited products. So most small businesses will start here. But heads up, even though it's cheaper per month, there's also a 3% transaction fee to budget in. So it's really worth sitting down to figure out how much your biz will be bringing in in online sales each month to see if the 3% fee ends up quickly offsetting the couple extra bucks you'd be paying to bump up to the next plan or tier. If you need to be able to offer monthly payment plans or special promo codes that automatically apply themselves to the cart's total, or you want to be able to accept payments in person using Square, this is when you'll want to make the jump up to the basic commerce or advanced commerce plans. As you're building your store, if you try to access a feature that's not available in the plan you've selected, Squarespace will let you know, and you'll be able to decide how important that feature is to you versus how much extra the next tier will cost you per month. One thing I've learned is that adding a shop to your site does not guarantee your site visitors will actually book or buy your thing. So if you're looking for some tips and tricks for turning those clicks into actual paying clients and customers, I definitely recommend watching my free training, Build a Site That Sells 101. It is a 60 minute on-demand webinar that covers the site building best practices you need to know so that your site is set up to sell in your sleep. I'll be sure to pop a link to that in the description below. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. If you found it helpful, I would love for you to hit that like button and let me know. Remember, next week we are covering how to start customizing your online shop now that it's all set up. So be sure to subscribe to my channel and then hit that bell notification so you don't miss the video when it drops. Wondering what to watch in the meantime? Check out this video.